In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Amen. Once again, welcome to our celebration of the sacred mystery. Those of you who are gathered here, and also those of you who are watching via this uh, electronic uh, thing. Uh, we gather to celebrate sacred mystery in order to do so worthily, let us call to mind our family and ask for forgiveness. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so we pray. As we enter into prayer, let us remember in a special way Barbara Hawkshaw, for whom this Mass is being offered. Almighty God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, while the children of Israel were camped in Gilgal. They kept the Passover. In the evening on the 14th day of the month, in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord.
all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the young man gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country where he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, severe famine took place through the country and he began to be in need. So he went out and hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. The young man would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. And when he had come to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to, enough to spare? And here am I dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he went off and went to his father, and when he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For the Son of Man was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked him what was going on. The slave replied, Your brother has come home, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him safe and sound. Then the elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have worked like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have given, never given me even a young goat, so that I may celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, he killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are old with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead, and has come to life, he was lost, and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. Well, that's a long gospel, it's a familiar one, we hear it every year, we hear it a couple of times in the early point of fact, so it's one that we're very familiar with, we've heard it over and over again, we've heard homilies about it over and over again. In fact, before I was, I was getting ready to do um, uh, for Mass, you know, get, think, reading over the readings during the week, I thought, well, I'll look it up on the internet and see what other people are saying about this, and they're all saying the same thing. Well, I mean, these re religious people are all saying the same thing, priests put the homilies on the internet. And they're all talking about young people going on drugs and young people getting into mischief and young people doing... But nothing about old people getting up to mischief. <laughs> nothing about old people falling off the wagon or getting involved in things that they shouldn't get involved in and then, and then coming back to repentance. And I thought, well, I'll change the tenure. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. About 30 or 40 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, 1980 I think it was, there was a man arrested in Toronto, in Willard, he was living in Willowdale, and he was a, um, an ex-Nazi, he, he, well he was a Nazi, right? He belonged to the SS and he'd done quite a lot of criminal things during the war, you know, that we're familiar with and what we read about. And he was arrested to be deported back to Germany because he was a war criminal. And he ended up, they took him into the Don Jail. And while he was in the Don Jail, I knew the chaplain in the Don Jail. The chaplain in the Don Jail was Father Mario de Giusti, right? And Father Mario is a, quite a diminutive Italian, no nonsense priest. Right? 
And Father Mario told me this story because I didn't meet the man, but Father Mario I knew at the Don Jail. And Mario said to me, what happened is that he was arrested. And Mario went to see him because Mario used to visit the people in the Don Jail, uh, particularly those who had nobody to come and sit, visit them, like family or friends or people like that. So Mario went to see him. And Mario said to him, look, it, it turned out he, he had cancer. This guy had cancer. And Mario said to him, why don't you go back to Germany? Don't fight extradition. Just go back to Germany because you'll be your own people and speak your own language. If you stay, in the, if you stay here, you'll have to go through the long process of uh, fighting extradition. You're going to have cancer and the facility is here in the prison for people who are treating people with cancer at the pits, right? I mean, the health system is, it, it, it's abysmal, particularly for people who are in prison. So he said, your best bet is to go back to Germany. So the fellow did, he, he went back to Germany, and he, first trial in Germany, he got sent to prison over there. And after about a year, Father Mario got this letter from Germany saying that the man was dying. And if there was any way Father Mario could get in touch with him, he would appreciate it. Now, the guy wasn't a Catholic, actually, now, the guy wasn't a Catholic. So Mario was going to Italy. And so he went on, on his route, went to visit his family in Italy. He stopped off in Frankfurt, and uh, he went to visit this guy in the prison. Right? And he said, well, it was quite a human prison, quite a nice place, really, as far as prisons go. And he was talking to the man, and the man said to him, you know, Father Mario, you just came to see me in the Don Jail, and you didn't treat me like a war criminal. You didn't treat me as somebody who didn't need to be talked to. You treat me as a human person. You treat me as just somebody who had been caught up in the system and was now in jail. You didn't differentiate between what crimes I'd done or whatever I'd done. Right? You just came and treat me as a fellow human being. And he said, as a result of that, I came to understand what I'd done during and he said, since I've been back in Germany, I have a lot to have to think about that. And I've actually been reconciled with my family, with my daughter and two sons. And he said, I've made my peace with God. And he said, that's all because you treat me not as a war criminal. I'm not a Catholic. You just treat me as a human being. You know? And so at the end of the day, you have this man Who's, who's, who's repented, who's come back to God, who's come back asking for forgiveness, right? He's made his peace with God, right? He's been into the pit. When we talk about being into the pit, the crimes and horrible things that he did, he acknowledged, right? So he was in, he'd been into the pit. And here he is coming out again and saying, I know I can seek repentance. I know I can seek God. And this is really an example of the uh, son in this gospel narrative that we read today. Because there's people on the outside who say, well, he deserved only God, he deserved this, he deserved it. If he died for cancer, that's too good for him, right? They're the, they're the elder son standing in the background. But at the end of the day, the man follows that uh, word of St. Uh, Paul. He's entrusted God with his, with his message of reconciliation. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Could we stand now and... Uh, we pray for the church that we carry a message of hope and forgiveness into the world. We pray to the Lord. As violence spreads across Ukraine, we pray that world leaders may focus on the good of all people by advancing peace rather than descending further into war. May God comfort the Ukrainian people who are suffering, distressed and grieving, that he may welcome the faith and departed into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all those who are ill, especially Brian Finnamore and Olivera Berambetta, John McGrogan, Christine Boyd, Joseph Kassar and Bill Jones, Mary Teresa O'Reilly, Anne Hanlon, Joe Zinski, Joe Wisniewski, Katrina Abasak, Gabriel Moore, Joseph Van Driek, John Jones, Gary Gardner, Caroline Fraser, and Stephanie Armstrong, that God may comfort them in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Amen. 
We pray for those who have gone before us, especially René Sauvé and Kevin Banker. We pray to the Lord. <laughs> Kevin Bolger, we pray to the Lord. That they may enjoy the glory of God. For this we pray to the Lord. Amen. And so we pray too for our own personal intentions at this time. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we offer our prayer in faith and hope and trust. Most especially, we offer our prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Just a housekeeping detail. Surely, uh, I don't think the lights are out on the balcony. There might be a switch there because there are definitely the switches on here. So, uh, and there is a second collection today. Oh, sit down, relax. There is a second collection today for Share Life. This is the beginning of our annual appeal. And if you have an envelope for the Ukrainian relief, you can just drop that in the basket as well. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
announcements. The second collection of course is uh, now the for the first uh, collection for Share Life for this year. Secondly, uh, please pick up a bulletin. Some of you may have been approached by a few people who are, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, panhandling. And uh, I know at least uh, one of them, uh, it's a great story, but it's not true. And so he tells you that he only has 10 cents or a quarter. You can rest assured he's got a little more than that. So it's up to you what you, uh, how you handle that. Also, uh, there was a bit of vandalism, I think, in one of the cars. But we've searched and searched and searched our tapes. And the tapes are pretty darn good. And the price we paid, they better be. Uh, we can't see anything on it. But just uh, double check. And if you do have any issues, please let me know as soon as possible. And we'll, uh, we'll uh, search our, uh, our cameras and tapes again. And uh, your life. Again, if you want to light a candle for the Ukraine, uh, the peace in the Ukraine, go ahead. As you can see, our pastoral candle, Christ, the light of the world, is burning brightly for peace, not only in the Ukraine, but in all areas where there's violence and injustice and oppression. And uh, so we keep that burning in all our masses, asking the Prince of Peace to uh, soften the hearts of some of those people. And uh, I think at this time, I'm going to ask Tim Hannon. Tim Hannon is uh, with the Knights of Columbus, St. Jude, and he just wants to talk to us for about two or three minutes. So, welcome back spring, welcome back joy. Let's come together in appreciation and dance. I'm, uh, in addition to being a member of the St. Jude Council number 6052, I'm the treasurer of a federally registered charity called the St. Jude Oshawa Community Center. St. Jude Community Center is fully funded by the Knights, the volunteers who run TD Bingo. So if you ever tune in on Rogers 7 o'clock on a Tuesday night and you see the balls tumbling, those are all volunteers from our parish here and, and members of St. Phillips. So one of the privileges we have as a community center is to build up our community. And we decided it's, well we say here, we're throwing a dance. Saturday, May the 7th, doors open at 7 p.m. A wonderful DJ who plays 50s and 70s, a little new stuff, and he says a little bit country, uh, down at the Royal Canadian Legion branch. Um, so he's gonna be playing from eight till midnight. Uh, the Legion ladies are gonna be putting on, if you've ever been to a funeral at the Legion, the sandwiches, the lunch, the desserts, the tea, the coffee, and there's gonna be a cash bar. Uh, we're doing this, we say, this is a community spirit building event with thanks to those who served us through the pandemic. So we're going to be casting the net out to some of our teachers, uh, members of the, uh, of the Catholic Family Services and the Rose of Durham, and volunteers in the community. And we're also extending it. This is a free event. However, we would appreciate a donation to support the the work of the Knights of Columbus and the Catholic Women's League. So this is sort of the general account. It's, it's um, and again, fully, uh, fully uh, voluntary. However, you know, about $20 covers our costs in a little bit. But again, it, I hope you get what I'm saying. Uh, what we want, we're asking is only we have eight tables, or 20 tables of eight, so there's 160 spaces. So we're asking if you'd like a ticket, come on in, sign up, and if you don't, we'll give you a ticket. If, you, if you're able to donate today, that would be wonderful. Otherwise, you can donate at the door or, or any time, or not at all. This is really, uh, we just wanted to get together and, and do something good for the community. So have I covered everything, Father? Is there anything you can think of? Sign up at the back. We'll be here for the next uh, few weeks but only 160 spots. So if you want to go, come on. Uh, I got the DJ, a lot of fun, food, cash bar. And by the way, this also helps the Royal Canadian Legion, as you can imagine, they've been shut down for two years. They could use the business, so we thought we'd give them business, and then also have an opportunity for you folks to 
support the volunteers of the CWL and the Knights that do all that work. Most of you know, the vast majority of the money we raise has to go to other registered charities, all in Durham region, churches, schools, registered charities. So every penny that the, uh, the TV bingo raises does that. But one of the charities that they support is the St. Jude Oshawa Community Center. So this dance, bringing us together, is, uh, is a manifestation of the work of the St. Jude Community Center. Thanks, Robert. See ya at the back of the church. So it's a welcome back uh, kind of affair, and uh, maybe shake the cobwebs off, and, uh, and uh, it's open to volunteers, uh, as Tim has said. Uh, Finance Council, Ministers of Communion, lecturers, all of you who have in any way been involved in parish life, uh, even if it's limited over the past couple of years, uh, to uh, those of you who have been volunteering in the community, it's, it's free of charge. And uh, I want to emphasize that the Knights are saying it's free of charge. There is a fundraising effort to it, but it's for their own works and the works of the CWL. But if you can't afford it, still come and uh, have a great time. But I know the sandwiches won't be as good as the Holy Cross CWL sandwiches. <laughs> We're giving However, them a break. I just, uh, we're giving the CWL a break, Father. We're giving them a break. Let the Legion ladies make the sandwiches this time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. God bless the Legion ladies. It won't be as good. Let us pray. <laughs> One of the many things I will miss when I leave here are uh, not the funerals themselves, but I mean the funeral lunch. <laughs> Then you can't have lunch without the funeral, so. <clears throat> oh well. Before I get in trouble. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. Bring those of us rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you all. Amen. Again, thank you so very much for coming to Mass. May Almighty God continue to bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. And have a nice weekend. <laughs>